Right, so this is part two of my um, building a napping accelerator titanium series that I'm doing. Part one, I went through the design and my thoughts on what this app was going to do. And part two is going to be going through the bare bones of the app, going through the code and um, just explaining a few things. What I will say is it's built using the common JS structure. I'm going to be using a custom font and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to be doing an iPhone 5 check and also I've got an animation on window open and closes. So I'll go through all of that and explain how it works. I'll try and not make this long. What I'll do is uh, in the future videos I'll focus on one of the windows and getting that sorted. I mean I'm hoping to not drag this out and just try and get through it as quickly as possible while still explaining what's going on. So yeah, it's right. So what we'll do, we'll load it here. We've got um app.js file open and app.js is kind of like the index file in regards to a website. So it's the f the file that is initially called. So from here, what we do is we sort of bootstrap the app and we load up the first window. Best practice is to have as minimum amount of code as you can within here. What I like to do is you'll see I've got I've got 50, how many lines? 14 lines. Some I mean I've heard there's a few guys that are really up on all this common jest stuff and they say you shouldn't have more than like three lines in there. But I'll, I'll explain why I've got 14. Right, what I've got is I've got a set timeout around this and you don't need that but I just like to have that. I have it at two seconds and that just makes the splash screen display for a couple of seconds as the app loads. I just like to do it. I don't know why. You don't have to. You could remove this and it wouldn't probably make any difference but it's just one of them things. I like to do it. I'm using JS Lint for code validation. Again, it's turned off by default and you don't have to use it but I just like to use it. It helps you out as you go along. If you miss a semicolon or if you don't close an if statement or something, it will it will let you know. It will give you little errors. Like say, as an example, if I got rid of this um, on this if statement, if I get rid of this last bracket, then it's gonna see it gives me this error here. And if I hover over it, it just gives me a little indication as to what's wrong. So then. It just helps you clean up your, your code a little bit and it helps whoever comes after you. At least you know that it's 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 all formatted properly. So anyway, yeah, that's enough of that. If you want to turn on JSLint, you need to go to the preferences menu. Sorry, you need to go to the preferences menu, then to studio, then to validation, and then just turn on JSLint. But yeah, it's good. I, I'd advise using that definitely. It's helped me out. So yes, yeah, so what we've got here then, so we've got use strict, which you need when you're using JSLint or else it will throw an error. Um, we've only got one variable here, but if I had multiple variables throughout this, then I would separate them with a comma and I'd just put whatever. So we declare all our variables in one statement. And then, really, what we've, what matters here is we've got this if statement. And we're using this, this if condition to see if it's an iPhone 5. So what this is doing is we've got um, if platform display caps platform height is greater than or equal to 568 then we know it's an iPhone 5 device in portrait mode um, iPhone 5 will throw this out. If you put an alert on this you will get back 568 on an iPhone 5. So yeah so if it is iPhone 5 do this if not, we know that it's um, a Retina or non-Retina iPhone 4 or lower device. And then we'll do this. So these, what I'm using is um, we're requiring this file, putting it into this variable, then we're calling this function. So if I just load up this file, start up, it's in my control folder. What I like to do is I have a control folder and from there, I, I bootstrap the app and I load up the initial window and then from there we do whatever we're going to do. So yeah, so let's load up that. I'll load up the one for the non-retina device. It makes no difference but it's just quicker to get to. So, right, so I've loaded that up and as you can see it's just one function called start app which was 
this function here that we're calling. So what start app is, is it's just a function which loads the initial window of the app. And this is what we can see is we're declaring all the variables at the top. We're creating the window. Creating uh, the foot the initial window just has like five labels. So what we're doing is we're creating these labels. Yep. Then I've gate of the ones which have event listeners to them. I've just put here in this little group. And the events are just to open up the open windows basically. So we've got that. Then we're adding we're adding the labels to this main window and then we're just going to open the window and then at the very bottom we export this function so it's available when the file is required so let's have a look then if I just load this in the simulator just now it'll make a bit more sense so I'll pause the video while this happens so there's our splash screen and here's our initial window so here are this is Right there, let me go through it wrong. So we've got this main window and we've got our background image, bg1.jpg, and that is literally all of this background here. And then we have our labels. So we have this label at the top, which is like a title, I guess. Then we have these four here, which for this demonstration purpose are they're just the buttons really that you click to get to the other windows. But we won't worry about that just now. As you can see, I'm using a custom font on this. And the way you use a custom font is you what you need to do. Wait, the hell, let me go to the folder actually. Right. So for iOS, I'm in the resources directory of our app, and I've put the all, the font the font file, which is this always.ttf. I've put that in my resources folder. And then there's one other thing you need to you can't just put the file in here. You put the file in here, and then what you need to do is you need to edit your info.plist folder um file, sorry. And um you get your info.plist whenever an app is when you have, whenever you generate a build folder. And the way you generate a build folder is by running the app in the simulator. So let me just show you that. I've gone up now to the main this is the main um, folder for the app. So all of our files go in the resources directory. And when you run the app, you get this build folder. So once you've built the app once, inside the build folder, there'll be this info.plist. And what you want to do is you want to make a copy of that, go back up to the main folder, and then paste that info.plist here. Then what you can do is you can double click this, and you can edit certain things and you can add things to it. So if we just have a quick look, so if we look under supported inter interface orientation, I've taken out everything apart from portrait. Because for this app, I don't want it to, if a user turns the phone um, sideways, I don't want it to um, change with that. I want to just keep it portrait. So you can add that in here. Also, um, this is one we want anyway actually is the fonts provided by the application so what I've done in here is you put the file name of the font so you put that in there click save then in your app you can just put in under font family if you well you will be using the Mac what you need to do is let me show you actually if you double click this it will load up font book and then here you see where it says always in my heart that is the name that you need to put here okay I know on Android you, I, th I believe I think you have to store the actual font file in a different place but under font family I think in Android you can just put the file name I'm not 100% I haven't I haven't built an Android app for a little bit but I'm pretty sure that's all it is so yeah so anyway so that's what that does um, I hope that made sense but any questions just let me know and I'll try and sort it out so anyway so we're doing that let me show you this and on the top one you can't really tell but I've added this font shadow to it so to add a shadow on your font you just put shadow color give it a hex value and then you set the offset 
with the X and the Y value. And that just helps, like, where is it? Because without the shadow, that looked a bit lost up there. But with the shadow, it gives it a little bit of depth, I guess. And it just it just helps it. Helps it stand out a little bit more. For the other labels, I haven't added that shadow because it looked a bit weird. But you could if you wanted to. I mean, you're not restricted to just one. You could do that. And you could change these values to whatever you want. So there's, they're all pretty much the same. They're just... I've just changed the top value for each of those so they display like that. So then we've got the event listeners for those labels because these labels, when I won't click one just yet, but when you click one, it will open up that uh, the specified window f for that, if that makes sense, it should make sense. So yes, it will just open that, if you think of it in a website manner, it will open up that page. So yeah. So that does that. So then we've we've got our event listeners, which I'll go through in a sec. What you also need to do is you need to add those labels to the main window. If you don't do this, then they won't show up at all on the on the screen. Then finally, we're going to open this window. Right. So let's go through this latest label. So if I click this now, it's going to load the latest window. So if I click that, you see, latest tips. It's just empty at the minute. But yeah, so that's this window. And then I've put this back button. We can click that, and then it will go back to this screen. So what's going on here is within the event listener, we've declared our variables that we're going to use. It's only two. And what we're doing is we're, in, we're requiring this file, and then we're creating a new instance of this function which is a new instance of the window which this function returns then we're opening that window and within the open parameter I've put this line here in curly brackets and what this does is that adds that animation where it curls up the screen on window close I've put curl down but I'll show you that now what I'll do is I think I'll only go through the code of one of these windows, but I'll show you all four of them in the app. But they're all pretty much the same. There's no need to go through all of them. So I think I'll go to this file here. I don't know why I said here like that then. But yeah, I'll go to this. And this is in a folder called UI. What I like to do is, as I mentioned, I put the, the startup file in a folder called control. And then... For all the other windows, I put in this UI file. Again, this is just my preference. I'm not saying that this is the best practice or anything like that. This is just how I do it, and it's how it helps me when I'm um, looking to edit something. I just know where it's going to be. So, yes, yeah, so let's look at that the latest file. So, this is the latest.js file. And again, at the moment, this is just one function that is being exported at the bottom. The function is called open latest. So if we go back to startup, we can see we're requiring that, then we're creating a new instance of open latest. Now this is a little bit different to the startup file because at the bottom of the startup file we open the window, but this time we're returning the window. And the reason I'm doing that is so we can open and close this window multiple times and each time we just create a new instance of it. So I hope that makes sense, but if not, again, just let me know and I'll try and find some, some decent documentation or something for you to go through. So what we've got here, declare the variables again at the top, declare the window, or create the window, then let me show you that again actually. So the latest window we've got, all we've got really is the background, label and the back button so we've got the window the label and then the back button the back button I've done as an image view because we're using this custom image arrow that I just drew in Illustrator so what we've got here at the moment the only event that we have is on the back button and what this does is it allows us to return back to the main page and we can just keep doing this and we're not going to get any errors and 
And also, what I will add is, um, what you want to make sure you do is when you close a window, you want to close it, remove all the objects from it, and then null the window object. Because if you don't, they'll pile up in memory, and before you know it, the app's possibly, or probably, going to crash. Because you are limited to the amount of memory that you have on a mobile device. It's not like a website where you can just do what you want, and because of the hardware of computers these days, it doesn't matter. But with a phone, you really are restricted, so you need to make sure that you're cleaning up the memory as you go along. Just getting rid of anything that's not needed. So what I do is on this back burn, we close the window, and I've put this animation, this curl down. So what we do is we close the window, then we remove the objects from it. In this case, it's just the back button and the label. Then we null the um, objects or variables, header, label, back button, and then we null the window. And I know you don't have to put null. You could just put that to anything, to the string of like... Well, that didn't work. But you could put it to the string of T if you wanted to. As long as that variable no longer references the titanium object, then that's fine. That's what we want to do, is we want to get these titanium objects out of memory. So yes, that's all that's doing. You click back, closes the window, removes the objects, and then nulls the window object. So yeah, so that's what that does. So again, I'll just open that up. We click that and it opens the window with the curl up animation. We click back and it will close the window with the curl down animation and it will null all the objects. A good way of testing your memory allocation in your apps is once you've got the, um, I'll just quickly show you actually. If you go into your build folder, you'll see that you've got this Xcode project here. If you double click that, it will load up Xcode and you can use the profile tool and go through the allocations and you can see what is being left in memory when you're opening and closing windows. What you want to make sure is as you're closing windows it's getting taken out of memory because if they start piling up, as I mentioned a minute ago, it's not good and, and the bigger your app grows the more that this really matters. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open and close all the other windows just so you can see. They work in the same way, but I'll just show you. So latest, you can open it, curls up, close it, curls down, add. It's the same sort of thing, just has the title at the top and nothing else at the moment. My tips, same sort of thing, and the help screen, same sort of thing. Um, as you'll see on a few of these, the middle section is slightly different because you see this says um, it doesn't go right to the bottom that's because this will not um, wait there, let me go to latest on latest sorry on latest we're gonna be using this to scroll and we're gonna have multiple tips in here and we're gonna scroll through them so this just lets the user know that there's more content to come so they can scroll their finger up and down whereas on help there's not gonna be a scroll we're gonna have everything I think, I think what I said before is we'll have a little paragraph and maybe a Facebook and Twitter button and an email button or something along those lines. But yeah, so that's that. So let me just see what else is there to go through. Um, the other files within the UI folder are all pretty much the same as this. It's literally at the moment, create the window, add a label, add a back button and the event for the back button. So yeah, so I think, I think that's probably alright for this video. How long has this been? Yeah, that's definitely enough for this. So um, in the next video, what I'll do is I'll probably do the add a tip window. Because in that one we're going to have to create an API to access our server. And we'll create a database where we can add a tip on the app and it will store it in the database. We'll upload an image and some text, I think, and the title. That's what we'll do. So, yes, yeah, so that'll be in part three.